Hi folks. You're looking at a defeated man. I have spent two days now fighting this straight edge of miles. I showed it to you in one of the first uh, planing scraping videos. He brought it over to me. It won't hold its shape. It was twisted and, and it moves every time he scrapes it. So I heat stress relieved it and was planning it and People were talking about the first video about that hole. So I said, oh, what the heck, let's go ahead and try another way of fixing it. Now I've done other kind of repairs on these things. Uh, this is one that I had to eat because my planer decided to go down and lengthwise at the same time. It took about a quarter inch chunk out of that. Uh, that's been muggy welded and re-stressed relieved and then planed and scraped and so far it's been okay But for a whole that I, I somebody else's I just don't want to do that so I got to feeling Adventurous and I started thinking of ways to repair that hole and basically what I came up with was to get a piece of durabar turn it down to a half inch, thread it half inch by 20, tap a hole in there, make a form-fitting thread so that when I planed it there wouldn't be any edges seen, and be done with it. This video is the story of some of the things that I've done. It's not everything in there because it took two days to get to this point. Anything from not having a lay that could turn that small of a piece of uh, Dura bar. So I had to go over to my buddy Don's. It's taken me two days to get to this point right here. I'm not going to show you all the steps and things that I've done. We filmed all of it, but frankly, I can't bear to watch it again. So. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown and then pick up the video of what's going on tonight. This is a piece of uh, Durabar that I sawed out. It's a three-quarter by three-quarter. I was going to put it over here on the Axelson 20 because out of all the lays in this shop, that's the only one that's running good and safely right now. I sold Don my 16-inch Axelson and I got to get something else going pretty quick because the 20 can't do something that small in its four jaw. Went to Don's, got to use my old lathe after he made me first start off with a, oh, what's an, an atlas. That's it. It was an atlas. I found that atlases can't even take a decent cut on a piece of this bar, or his can't. He let me use my 16 though. Took about four minutes after we got all the chucks set up, but that's the least of my problems. Watch the video and find out. <sighs> well, this is another fine mess Don's got me into. Don't have a lathe between it, second. It's pitiful. In my shop, I have four lathes currently. One of them runs fine, except I don't have a chuck, a four jaw chuck small enough to get down to hold a three quarter inch square piece of cast iron that I'm turning. So, Don said, come over to my shop. And he had bought an Axelson a year ago or so. He's never run a lathe before, and he found one of these, and he thought, hey, this would be great. At, not Atlas and Atlas. I'm so sorry. I have blasphemed. I'm going to have to severely injure my head. <laughs> All right. An Atlas lathe. Look pretty. They look pretty, and they do go around and around and around. Piece of garbage. That's Don's words, not mine. So now, I 
I'm going to take you here and show you his Don's toy machine room. This is what he had before I got a hold of him. And this is the actual thing. He's done a nice job painting it, taking care of it. But this thing won't even cut that little piece of cast iron. So, I need that for today's project. So now Don is scurrying around and he graciously consented to let me use my old lathe out here. See, now I got him on the path to righteousness. Decent sized machines. And he's frantically over there trying to get this one ready to uh, run. I wasn't ready yet. He says it wasn't ready yet. Yeah, just for you, Steve. Just for me. God, you're a good man. But this is all your fault. You made me sell you this lathe. I didn't do that. You called me. Isn't it pretty, guys? You just got to paint the pretty pedestals. Last week we got it off of his carriage. So he's frantically trying to wire it up. I'm frantic. He's, you look frantic, Don. You're frantic. That's the way I work. It's where you are. Once we get some electricity to it, we'll change out that jaw to a four jaw. This lathe, when I had it, had all kinds of jaws, uh, chucks and everything. And my 20 just doesn't have all those accessories yet. And my 10 EE, well, it runs, but I deem it too unsafe to run because it's too easy to go in reverse gear. So, until we get it fixed, I'm out here slumming. That you are. Man. Oh, this is Don's latest project. I'll show you a clip of what we went and picked up at that warehouse full of old tools. Come on, camera. This is his current project. Taking apart this grinder and uh, cleaning it up. It already looks 15 times better. That's the shop made base that it's on. So heavy we can barely move it around. And here's the guards off of it. These guys put some rigged you see what covers on? on it. I see that now. That, that, that's pretty bad. It worked, but. And so say, well, what do we have off the floor that we can throw in here? Well, yeah, that'll work. So he's taking all of the house hinges off that other one there. See, like that one. And yesterday we heated it up and bent it out straight, and now we're going to finish it up. And he's got all little pieces here. It's all needle gun. Waiting for a new bearing. Waiting for a hundred and sixty dollars worth of bearings. So, so far you have $400 into the grinder, $160 into the bearings. That's it. A little paint you're going to have to have. And then you're going to have to buy new wheels. This wire is too thick. Too thick wire. I don't know where they went in, I think. All right, Don, will you do that? I'm going to change the chuck. Okay, pull that uh, drill chuck out. this lathe. It's got gray on it right Not here. Finished. Right there. Not finished. 
You don't have to use it. You can just take it out and go home. I can just leave. Just leave. Take my sarcastic wit. Get the hell out. Get the hell out of here. I can't go that way. I'll get electrocuted. Yeah, no shit. I'm go where you are. All right, roll this face up. If just there? Mm -hmm. Just hold it flat? It helps align it. Yeah. Square. Okay. Lock that, please. And how do you do that? Put this first lever, mm -hmm. just push it over to the left. One half inch is what they said. That's big. That's what I know. Let me get something to hold it. Is it not a gear? It's in gear. I'm just holding it. I locked it. Yeah. This is a fine machine, but we don't use tow bars on axle seats. <laughs> Get me away from here. God. It worked. Damn. You put it right in here. We'll use it on there. So what locks it? I'm going to hit you. <laughs> what locks it? Ah, it was in neutral. I'm going to hit you big time. Hey, it worked. I know it'll work. It's not the point. That's a fabricator's way of doing things. Keep telling I'm not a machinist, I'm a fabricator. You're trying to make me into a machinist. Not there yet. This is threading, huh? Do a little bit of a. Uh on this cast iron make this plug this is an adjustable half inch by 20 uh, half inch fine thread and I can adjust this type of die to get the fit of I want Then I'm going to take this old piece of cast iron and drill a hole through it and tap that and then adjust this thread using this uh, die to uh, make it fit as tight as I can. I don't want any, you know when you screw in a thread and then you shear it off, where the thread goes in, especially the chamfer, the entry, you'd have a little ring. So what I'm trying to do is just get this to where it's as tight as possible in the threads, not torque down type, but just a close tolerance fit. And once I get it there, there shouldn't be very many uh, surface imperfections left when I plane it off. Anyway, that's that's the thought about it. See how it works out. Well, what I've done is I've taken a piece of uh, cast iron, this is an old piece of Durabar, and I uh, drilled it, ran my uh, National Fine half inch 
tap through it and test fitted it with what I made here and it goes in there it's snug but there's it doesn't take a lot of force that's what I want so now I'm going to leave this like this until I uh, see how deep I'm going to have to bore into that straight edge and then I'll cut a piece of this off and we'll screw it in and then plane off the top sound like a plan good this is the only one I've got Continuing on with this, the other night uh, I had a brainstorm. Well, no, it did not hurt. But as you gather more tools for your shop, you start thinking of different ways of doing things. You know, it's that old adage of you've got to. If you only got a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, I have truly not wanted to balance a straight edge on a drill press to, or even mill to put a hole in it so that you could thread it. The other night I woke up, middle of the night, thinking about a blue tool. And all of a sudden, I remembered I had a blue mag drill. And if I were to take a center cutting mill bit and uh, bore or mill that hole into that cavity, it would be a lot safer than trying to run a twist drill into it with a point. Mainly because I don't know what's underneath that surface. And most of the ones that I've milled into or planed into, you know, they look like Carlsbad caverns with stalactites and everything else hanging down. So I've been really hesitant to do anything like that. But I bought a 2964s. Tell you what, this was putting a lot of pressure on that. That may be why it's been so dead gum hard to, to use. Huh. Now I've got to just figure out how to get that in there. I don't think it can go through all this mess. Actually, that screw right there has something to do with it. Anyway, I feel pretty safe with this. Uh, don't make me get out the instructions. They do hide one inside. Oh, that's cheating. That's darn cheating. They did that just to make it where you had to read the manual. All right. I think we're going to need to do a test piece on here or I mess up a straight edge. Give me back. Remember, my whole goal is not to have to buy a 400. That one's about a $600 one. I don't want to buy one. Okay. Let's start there. Then we'll take the 2964 drill and drill into it 
and then come back with the carbide and make the bottom flat. The whole reason I want to make the bottom flat is I don't want an air void in there. I don't want a, a void of a lot of uh, red Loctite either. I want the metals to all be as uniform as possible through there so that when it's cooling down and heating and expanding and contracting you won't have an air pocket or a pocket of a material that expands at a different rate so that's my thinking let's get the mag on mag is on okay hold your ears Planer tables make really good hold down benches also. We can see in there that the top hole's got a nice flat bottom. All right, here's our culprit. It's a casting defect, and I don't know how deep it went, but I do know it looks terrible. And, for the sake of uh, an experiment, I think we're going to try to drill it out, and then, Thread it. Well, the mag drill locked on to that pretty good as I'd hoped it would. All right, let's get this around here on this side. Let's see what we can do, guys. Well, that didn't want to cut, and I got a sneaky suspicion I know why. Now, I don't know how good this camera will do, so bear with me. I'm going to uh, take you out of the stand right there and see if we can get in there close. Anybody know what that is? Unfortunately, I do. You see, I've run into this problem before. Inside that hole, it's very hard for you guys to see. I'm sorry I don't have a camera that can show you detail like that. Inside that hole, once I shine a light on it and cleared out the opening enough, I can see a little X. People, if you're going to cast straight edges, don't put damn sheetrock screws in your mix. This is the third or fourth one I've found like this. They don't melt and, and become part of the mix. They sit in there floating around causing cavities and uh, who knows what else. You know, this edge is probably going to be worth a thousand dollars when we're through. So don't put sheetrock screws in them, guys. Man. I don't know what to do from here. Right now, I'm, I'm just inclined to finish planing that edge, flip it over and do the angle. I'm gonna talk to the owner of it, see what he wants me to do. 
I don't mind experimenting for experimenting sake. And right now, if I had to do something with that, I would almost get an angular cutter and cut a hole around it. The other thing I can do is get a carbide drill or drill through the screw. Hope it doesn't tear that up. Then I have to get a carbide 2964 bit, drill into that, and then finish it with my $35 carbide end mill. I don't think it's worth it. As an experiment, sure. We'll see what he wants to do, but it's a shame. Cutting corners by putting any little bit of metal you can find into your mix gives us problems down the road. So stop it. I guess that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good new year. Uh, it's always something.